cattle restraints are common overseas, but they're catching on here as more and more farmers use them to treat their cattle for lameness and other issues. For an outlay of between three and five thousand dollars, farmers can buy a Wrangler, and we spoke to its designer, Wilco Klein Olink. Where did the inspiration for the Wrangler come from? Um, pretty much I, when I started back in the days when I was farming. Uh, I was working, working on a farm and we were um, working on a cow. And this is when I, the days when I was a, a farm cadet. And uh, the farm manager there actually, um, the cow didn't quite do what she's supposed to. And um, the end result was she actually ended up falling down and dislocating her hip and she became a, a freezer, a freezer cow or a freezing works cow. And so uh, because of that, I started thinking, the, the brain started thinking, well, there's got to be a better way. And um, the end result was that's how I sort of started just piecing bits and pieces together over the, over the years after that. And then the end result was we uh, manufactured the Wrangler. Lame cow handlers are common in the United States and Europe. So, so what's different, if anything, about your device? Um, the principle is the same. The difference with ours is that we've incorporated not just purely as a lane cow handler. Uh, when we designed this, it was done together in conjunction with uh, a few of the local vets based down in Edgecombe. And we um, decided we could incorporate uh, a few extra features to make it um, also usable for doing uh, normal animal handling in the form of caesareans or um, biopsies where there is enough room around this unit to, to have it in such a way that they could, uh, they could use this as well plus the fact that we made it um, one of the models that we have is a mobile one so people can use it as a mobile carving pen out of the paddock then they swing gates off it and can use, actually carve cows out on the paddock as opposed to taking them back to the cow sheds. So. Being multi-purpose does that make it unique? To that degree yes it does yeah yeah it's different from just purely an animal lameness handling device uh, where it became more of a multifunctional unit um, so that the outlay the financial outlay on the unit was then it served another purpose as well other than just purely lameness treating cows for lameness. Talk me through the use of the belly straps, the winches and the supports. How does it all work? Well, basically, the, um, the, one of the ingredients that this thing has, it obviously has a back leg bar. This rope gets winched onto that, gets wrapped around this bar. So the end result is when that rope and, uh, gets winched up with the handle, that, e that back leg ends up getting pushed and held up against that bar there. So when the, 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 the farmer can then, if he wants to, literally actually look at the cow's hoof from this angle, and know that she's not going to belt you because it's, it's restrained well and truly by that bar there. What the other thing is, is of course, um, the problem you can have, and that's what started me thinking back then, was to restrain the cow from falling down when you're working on a hoof. And that's why we have the, um, the belly bands here, um, one that sits just in, on the chest and the other one that sits just in front of the udder. And that sort of restrains her and stops them from falling down. And then there is, of course, the front foot attachments that, um, that are an integral part of it as well, meaning that when they go to work on a cow's hoof, there is actually literally nothing in the way there as opposed to when using leg roping a cow onto a bar, you've always got some sort of obstruction or obtrusion in the way, whereas with this one, the leg is, the hoof presents itself and, and actually lays at that point there, so you've got full access to it without any fear of the cow harming herself, you, or you can have time to do the, the proper job then. What about the removable bars? What's their purpose? In the case of what I was talking about, about a caesarean, um, generally what needs to happen within New Zealand, if the facilities aren't right, is that um, the vets have to give the cow a general anaesthetic and knock them out cold, and they do, it lay, they do the cow laying down. What you can with this thing is that you remove these bars, the pins come out, these bars are removable, and then you can, um, they can just give them a local anaesthetic and the cow actually gets a C-section um, standing up. And the vets like that as well because it means that um, when it comes to sewing things up, everything seems to align itself up again and it is free, a free draining as well. Can anyone use this equipment? Uh, within the dairy industry, yes. Um, it takes, uh, we supply a DVD, um, with, the, with any purchase of a Wrangler and that DVD is as much of a, a promo blurb as it is a, uh, an instruction aid and with that um, once they've looked at it once or twice they go out and they work with it and we get the old farmer that rings back and says I, I can't quite figure this out and I say well look back at the DVD again and that goes through step by step how to function the thing and after that yeah we get nothing but praises about them. So You've now got a number of different models on the market so what's the main point of difference with them? Um, we have primarily four different models. Um, the most common one is the one that you see here, which is what the, the model we call the Race Wrangler, which basically either gets dyna bolted down 
on the concrete in an existing shed or when they're building a new shed, it gets poured into the concrete. Then we have one that's available when people have their own head bale that they prefer to use. So that's one that's the same idea as this, but without a head bale. And then we also have the one, uh, the one we call a Premier, which is, is the mobile one, uh, which I was referring to, that actually has um, the mobility option where it can be taken from either farm to farm. So if people have got multiple farms or if they have a runoff or if they have a, uh, a, carving, a, a mobile carving facility, if that's what they want then. Not everybody has the ability to be able to put one of these in place in some of the existing sheds, they're limited for room, so then the mobile one can be placed anywhere down where they want it. There still seems to be a fairly high incidence of lameness these days, so why do you think it's still a problem? Uh, that's a $64 million question. Um, I believe there is a lot to do with the herd size growing. Um, there is the fact that um, cows are obviously walking bigger distances, so uh, st spending more time on the concrete. Um, there is a definite, there was a trial done by Dairy Insight Fund that was funded by Dairy Insight back in 2004 and that certainly showed that there was uh, a lack of fibre in the diet had a contributing factor to it. Um, from there a lot of it's speculation as to what else there is that could be contributing to it. And how important is early detection? Not critical, but it makes a huge difference as to the time that, 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 uh, that is spent firstly on working on the cow's hoof and secondly the recovery period that thereafter and the, the, the financial input in the form of possible uh, penicillins or, or um, uh, veterinary products that need to be used to, to get rid of this problem again. So, and obviously the milk that goes down the drain because of it. What about the cost benefits of using the Wrangler for treating lameness? What's the payback? The cost benefit in the form of having to only use one labour unit in which to, to see the cow's hooves on the larger farms becomes a, a great saving. Um, um, the benefit of being able to do it properly, um, not having to revisit that cow again. I and mean, then obviously um, should the incident happen where a cow falls down um, and you end up with a dislocated hip or a dislocated leg, um, you don't have the cost of replacing that cow and that basically pays for half the unit um, straight away just with one cow then. So. And that's all in today's programme. Join us again next time when we'll take a close-up look at your sector in detail on the Sector Report.